Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager with Autodesk. For this tips and tricks on Showcase, I want to show you how to add a behavior to a storyboard slide to start building up your story that you want to tell with Showcase. The behavior included in the scene was created upon import of an FBX model of a metro. The metro was modeled and animated using basic keyframe animation in 3ds Max design. Upon import of the XBX, the animation was translated as a behavior once in showcase. To play the behavior once in showcase, I'm using the basic play, stop and rewind button included on the behavior menu. To help you understand a little bit further how you can include this behavior in a storyboard slide, let's look at the behavior itself. So once I play the behavior, the train moves forwards and stop. To understand the option available when you're adding the behavior to the slide, let's look at the playback button of the behavior itself. So there's the basic play button, which will play the behavior from beginning to end. Now at the end position, I need to bring the train back to the initial position in order to be able to play it again. From there, I can stop, hit play and play again. But if I hit play once the behavior is completed, the behavior won't play until I reset it to the beginning position because it already played entirely. In the playback button, you also have a slider, which allows you to slide the animation back and forth, just as a visual reference. There's also a minus and a plus button, which allow you to play slower or faster the animation. This will only work with the playback button and could not be included in the, the storyboard slide. So I suggest that you don't play with the plus or minus as it might interrupt the flow of your playback and you might get lost in the actual speed of the playback. So I suggest you stuck with the play, stop, rewind, nudge a little bit forward, nudge a little bit backward and reset the uh, behavior to the original position. So those are the control that you want to play with and focus with. Now keeping this control in mind, let's see how we can add this be behavior to a storyboard slide. To open the storyboard menu, press U on your keyboard. We'll start by creating a storyboard slide. To help, we will add the camera shot that we have presently in the viewport, which is a still camera that lasts for five seconds. By right clicking on the storyboard slide, you'll be able to set the thumbnail image and use it as a reference. By opening the slide properties, you'll be able to see that my shot has been added and that my slide is lasting for five seconds. To add the behavior to the storyboard slide, let's right click on the thumbnail and look at the option. You can add playing forward from start, play backward from end, pause, continue, stop and reset to start, stop and reset to end, continue forward and continue backward, which relates to the playback menu we had just reviewed. So let's add this behavior from start playing forward and you'll see the result here. This is pretty straightforward so far, but let's complicate things a little bit and add a second shot to my storyboard slide. So I'm going to choose a second still shot that is also lasting five seconds to my storyboard slide. So you see in the slide properties, both of my shots are now included and the duration of my slide is now 10 seconds. Now I have the option to move my behavior in time. We'll leave it at the beginning for now and it's played to see what's happening. So the first shot is played with the behavior of the train and then the second shot is played and I no longer have a behavior. So what if I want to have the metro pass twice during the same slide? I can't add play forward from start in the same slide because I've already used it, but I can use continue for example. So the train I'm hoping will continue on playing. If I hit play, this is not what's happening because the train cannot continue to play because it hasn't been reset to the initial position. So if I look at the exterior of the metro station, you'll see what's happening here. 
So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And by zooming out, I will have to uh, turn off the depth of field just so I can focus on the scene a little bit. So we see as the train is played forward, at the end of the behavior, the train is stuck in the end position. So I will need to add the behavior stop and reset to start for the train to be stopped at the end of the first behavior once it's played forward, and then it will continue playing. So sometimes in order to be able to use the behavior twice in your scene, you will have to reset it to the initial position in order to be able to continue on playing it. So that's something to keep in mind. The uh, storyboard slide now includes three times the same behavior with three different actions. So let's add a second slide and see how we can integrate a few more things. So for this second slide, we'll be adding an animated shot. So I'm going to select this one and add it to the current slide. And I'm going to set the image as a thumbnail so I have a visual reference. Let's open the properties and you see that the slide properties is showing this animated shot. I'm going to add the behavior play forward from start and I'm going to hit play to see how these two slides are playing one after the other. So the first slide is playing, stop to reset, continue the behavior. And then it goes on to the second slide and the metro is going by no problem because the behavior that I have added to this slide is set to play forward from start. So that means play forward from the start position. So there's no conflict in between these two slides. But what if I change the first original slide by taking away the stop and continue and moving the behavior in time. So basically it interferes in between the two shots of my first slide. So this is what I have now for my first slide and now the second slide and there's no problem again because you can see that both slides are using the action to play forward from start. So as long as you use this action, most likely you won't run into a problem. But now at the end of this slide, the train is at the end position. So keep that in mind. So I'm adding a third slide here and I'm using this still camera that is looking directly at the tunnel. So this is a still camera that lasts for five seconds. So I'm adding it to my third storyboard slide and I'm going to set the thumbnails so I have a visual reference. So this particular shot is looking directly at the tunnel and I'd like to see my train there, but I don't want it to move. So I'm going to choose to stop and reset to start action to add to this particular slide. So I'm going to hit play for this particular slide and you see that the train is there, but is not moving. So by choosing to add the behavior as basically stop and reset to start, it means that this, the train goes back to his original position, but is not actually moving. And of course, you can have a second behavior in this slide and have the train eventually moving. So I'm going to add the behavior again. And this time I'm going to choose to play forward from start. And I'm going to move it a little bit later on in time. So the slide actually plays for a little bit with the train still in station and then eventually it moves and comes forward towards me. So you can have a variety of behavior in one slide, but you have to keep in mind of what the action was in the slide previous to the slide that you are playing. So basically it's a story that you're telling in between each of these slides and they interfere in the action. So you always have to keep in mind that. So all the options are there and available, but you have to be creative and keep in mind of what you are doing. The behavior will always play perfectly as long as it's set to the original position from which it's supposed to play. So if I recap here and I hit play under the storyboard menu, the slide will be played one after the other continuously as a story.
And the key here is to keep in mind that the um, behavior relates to each other. If you're going to play the slide continuously one after the other, you have to keep in mind that the behavior is dependent from the last or the end position from the previous slide that it's been played.